Thank you, Mayor, okay. for this uh, overview uh, of the possibilities of it uh, terrestrial in space and connecting the two. Uh, as, uh, as you show, uh, not only in, uh, in defense, but uh, overall, uh, we see it cybersecurity has emerged. It's a topic we have addressed uh, a few times already at the World Policy Conference. It creates serious questions. So, uh, Patrick, you are specialized in cybersecurity in space, uh, the most advanced in, uh, in Europe, working with the European Space Agency, as I mentioned before with the uh, national d'études spatiales in France as well. So what is the state of uh, the question of cybersecurity in space? Yes, uh, thank you for the invitation. Maybe I will start to present the space like a, a 3.0 evolution, not a 2.0. <laughs> From my point of view, it's real the, uh, the, the finalization of the digitalization of the world to have access to give access to internet to two to three billion person to connect a billion of uh, IoT devices in the world. And that's really the role of the space uh, we'll have in the future. And, uh, um, and we'll be follow not only the, the law of the physics, but to follow the law of the information theory law. And um, yes, the, the space will be the connection between the cloud to the uh, intelligent device, the connection between the cloud to the age. And um, as mentioned before, there are two major uh, use cases in the um, commercial space. One is the um, communication, the second one is the heart observation. In the communication is 80 to 90 percent, 90 uh, percent of the market is uh, incredible market with 20% uh, of increase per year. And in this case, there are different players. Traditional one, they use a geo orbit, okay? And they're under pressure from the new player in from the Leo orbit, like a Starlink. And uh, for in order to, to compete, they will integrate a new technology, uh, like to communicate via um, optical connection. Not anymore with uh, uh, electromagnetic connection, it's more around optic connection. This means there are no any more latency, there are no any more problem of, uh, of connection, and uh, uh, you don't need to ask the country for install the antenna because you don't need to ask the, the frequency of the country. And that's a big evolution. And uh, in this big evolution, only few companies will have access to this kind of technology and to provide connection around the world. And that's, there are some analogy around the 5G implementation with uh, uh, some player like Huawei, they have this kind of technology and they have some risk of uh, data sovereignty in case. The geo connection, we will have the same uh, analogy around the 5G and the access to this kind of technology. On the other hand, they are the new player. They work around the Leo um, Hobbit and uh, the major one or the leader one is, uh, is Starlink. They've ins already installed wa one million of a terminal, and they have 3,000 uh, 3, of uh, satellite all connected together, and we see the benefit of this kind of technology uh, in Ukraine, and uh, they can cover the global uh, earth with this kind of uh, satellite, and you have a, a low latency connection and very cheaper connection. Uh, connection with Starlink is uh, the terminal is 1,000 euro and the connection is uh, 100 uh, euro per month for our connection. And it's really, really, very really cheap. And in this case, as mentioned before, the cost of this kind of satellite to, for the development, the launch, and the operate the, the, the satellite for three years to five years is uh, 300,000 francs uh, euro. In this case, the, the, this company, they use off-the-shelf company, standard component. And that's in this case, we have some security issue because this kind of technology has access to different hackers around the world. Around the world, we can hack this kind of satellite. And there are some examples around that. That's the risk there are around the Liu uh, deployment for do the communication. It's not the sovereignty, but it's more the security because it's standard technology. Uh, but maybe sovereignty too, because uh, there are some, only some uh, launcher for launch this kind of technology, and you need to provide your satellite to, for example, to SpaceX 
we photo launch it, and uh, you, not have, you cannot control your satellite when you launch the satellite. And um, there are some new players for, uh, for uh, this kind of uh, use case, communication, is the uh, hyperscaler. As mentioned before, the space is the connection between the cloud to the edge, and the hyperscaler like Amazon, like uh, Microsoft, like uh, Google, they, will, uh, they want to play in this kind of field. For example, for the um, uh, new space uh, industry, the new player, Amazon, AWS is one of the leaders. You can provide, if you want, like a startup, like uh, my startup, I have access to the services of, uh, of Amazon for two years, it's free of charge, with thousands of technology inside. Okay? And it's really a leader of that. And they have some examples right now around that to launch a satellite with inside directly connection to the cloud and inside EI technology, data mining uh, technology, in order to uh, uh, process and manipulate data directly in the cloud. And that's the idea that you not need to, to communicate the, the, the data, but you process the data, the, directly the data in the cloud, and there are some advantages for do that. There are no problem for the cooling. There are no problem for uh, access to the uh, physical access to for, uh, for, for the data. And real, this kind of uh, new player, they will uh, launch around the world some satellite in order to develop this cloud, this data center, uh, in the in the um, in the uh, in the uh, in the space, and that's some risk is around the sovereignty of data because we will be played only by company to have this kind of uh, technology. The other use case I mentioned before is the heart observation. The heart observation is uh, is 10 or 20 percent of the market, the commercial market in the space, and in this case is uh, real. Uh, something connected to the, um, uh, the, uh, the traditional internet. Um, real, to, we have example in Ukraine, but we can have example in the, some form. You have an image of the herd, and after you manipulate this information, you, you, don't, you send this information from satellite to the cloud, you use AI algorithm in order to process this, uh, this data, and after you send some drone or some robot in order to uh, have some action around your, your farm. That's really the, the future of uh, health observation. And in this case, you have many players They really have access to your data. And in this case, you don't protect it or have uh, some uh, uh, sovereignty of your data and use this data like your asset and not to share your asset with uh, some other source, uh, company. And finally, um, there are now some, some, as mentioned before, we have, we have security issue, sovereignty issue, and uh, there are the risk are real um, concrete. We have example of uh, the impact. For example, when you hack some terminal in some, uh, in some region, you can collapse some, uh, some industry in the other part of the world. And, uh, and that's the idea to integrate security and new standard. And they are a new, um, a new standard right now, developed by the CCSDS, in order real to, to provide uh, cryptographic material, uh, security material, in order to operate business logic in space and uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the ground, in order to protect this kind of a new asset. Thank you, Patrick. Uh